Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in the Dana prison in Shrewsbury. Don't worry, I um, haven't done anything naughty, because uh, if I did, I probably wouldn't be allowed to be making this video of the prison, but I am in, a, I should say, a former prison. It closed in 2013. This is the Dana prison. You can see the building behind us. It's got quite a lot of history. You can actually do tours of the prison. I'm not doing that today, because I've got a few other things I came here to do. Here's a plan, though. You can see how extensive the prison is. So we're just here. We're going to go out through that gatehouse. I believe parts of the prison were designed by Thomas Telford. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure, though, it was these, this gatehouse here. So if we go out of here and across the road, that whistle you heard, that's the railway station in front of me, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. You see that bust up there? That's John Howard. He was a prison reformer. So that's the gates of the Diana prison. You, so you, as I said, you can do tours of it, which I'm sure are very interesting, and perhaps I'll um, come back and do that. But I didn't actually know, I didn't even realise it had closed as a prison. I haven't been to Shrewsbury for a while. I remember the last time I walked past it, it was still a prison. Anyway, we're going to follow a path now known as the Dan, which, if that's if I am pronounced it right, takes us up over this bridge here, over the railway station. Now, if you look down there, you can see parts of the railway station, and if you look that way, you can see Seven Tunnel Junction signal box, the largest mechanical signal box I'm pretty sure in the world, definitely in Britain, um, and behind it is Shrewsbury Abbey, which um, we'll also go and see, but that'll appear in a different video. So I'm just going over the footbridge now. What we're going to do, we'll go down to the railway station, we'll have a look at platform three, because all the other platforms have got ticket barriers, and um, it's too much trouble really, and it will take longer, but I can give you a general idea of what the railway station is like by taking on platform three and I really like this railway station because it's like the last big junction to be nearly all controlled by 74 signals so the Dana path continues up there this is the footbridge it has newly or recently been restored and the station building is a very impressive site and we're about to see the front of the station building it's in a kind of unusual um, site because you've obviously got a hill here up there Shrewsbury Castle, we'll get onto that in a minute, but the station itself is effectively on a bridge and what a lot of people don't actually realise is the platforms straddle the River Severn. So we're going to have a look at that, but if you stand here you get a brilliant view of the whole of Shrewsbury Railway Station. So I'm going to continue down these steps and if you can go that way towards the town centre or you can go through here. This will take us on to the railway station. Now I think it is one of my favourite railway stations, it's one of the most impressive stations I think. So this is platform for you, as you can see there's no ticket barriers here. I know we, it's a bit like when we did the barriers London Underground stations. It reminds me a bit of that when we looked for the 12 London Underground stations you could get onto a platform without buying a ticket. Of course, it's not to condone ticketless travel in any way. I just personally don't believe in ticket barriers, especially at railway stations like this. Over there, we've got the Arriva Trains Wales liveried skateboard. It's say Arriva Trains Wales liveried, it's now Transport for Wales. And there's a Virgin Voyager. Won't be Virgin much longer. In fact, by the time you watch this video, the name Virgin may have disappeared. So this might already be history before I've even published it. I'm just going to go down towards the end of the platform. Um, up there is the Abbey. It doesn't look like you can go as far as you used to. I haven't been here for a while. So yeah, there's the Abbey down there and Seven Tunnel Junction signal box. For some reason they're calling the British Transport Police. Um, hope nothing too serious has happened. Um, I know they don't want me, I know I have just come out of prison, but um, I didn't escape, I left prison legally. So, that's the, see the footbridge up there? That is the Dana footbridge, which we walked over. So to access the station, you go down to the main ticket office and underneath the tracks, and the ticket barriers are down stairs. So I won't go down to where they are, but I do think it's a really attractive railway station. It's got such a nice atmosphere up there is another single box. I think that might be called Crew Junction single box, I'm not entirely sure. There's um, quite a few single boxes, or at least three or four single boxes in the Shrewsbury area. So it's really quite fascinating if you're a railway and signaling enthusiast. So leaving the railway station now, we're going to go back up these steps to the Dana footpath. 
Um, because where we're going, we could go that way, but it's quite a narrow path and there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people. So I'm gonna take you round the back way. And what we're gonna do, as I said, above us is Shrewsbury Castle. We're gonna go and have a look at that. We're not actually gonna go into the main castle building, but I'm gonna take you to somewhere where we'll get quite a spectacular view over parts of Shrewsbury. So back to the Dana footbridge, just there. We're gonna continue this way now. And as we go up here, we get an even better view of the railway station. You can see, look at that. Lovely Gothic railway station. Shoot, it must all be used for offices. I'm not entirely sure it's useful. So the River Severn is also not that far over there. And it's also over there. So when we walk down the platforms, what they've done, they've now fenced it off. So I can't, couldn't take you down to the point where the platforms go over River Severn. But when we get in the castle, I'll be able to show that to you from a different perspective. So we're now kind of walking around the edge of the castle walls. Bit of a shame about this hoarding that seems to be covered in graffiti. It doesn't give the best first impressions to the town. If you came out the railway station this way. But I do love these sort of back alleyways that wind their way, you know, almost above the rooftops of, you know, the town. It just makes it more exciting. I mean, this, this isn't graffiti, it's obviously like a mural. There's actually a big mural of the castle and one of the bridges. Because in Shrewsbury, you've got English Bridge and you've got the Welsh Bridge. And I always get the two mixed up. Um, probably won't go to any of them today. The castle now is just there. That door, I'm going to assume, is locked. So I'm not even going to try and go down there. So we're going to have to now go down these steps and onto the road up into the town centre. In front of us is Shrewsbury Library. And you'll see in a moment, if you're wondering how Dana is spelled, if I'm pronouncing it right, that's, there you go. Obviously about all the stickers that someone's decided to decorate it with. So that's Shrewsbury Library. We're having a very attractive Gothic railway station. Shrewsbury's got a very attractive Gothic library. And sitting in front of the library is a statue of Charles Darwin, because of course, Charles Darwin, he came from Shrewsbury or lived in Shrewsbury. I'm pretty sure he came from Shrewsbury. If someone wants to comment and confirm, then, you know, please do. So, the castle entrance is just here. Now, we are going to go in to the grounds of the castle. We're not actually going to go into the building of the castle. As you can see, it says, the brown source sign says, castle and regimental museum so we're not going in the regimental museum we are going to the castle I'll just look at, I'll swing the camera around look at this lovely Tudor building and then the entrance of the castle is just up there we're heading for that tower it's called Laura's Tower and that's where we're going to because from we're not actually going up the top of Laura's Tower but we're going up the to the base of Laura's Tower and you get a very good view it's another awesome rainy day and I'm out making one of my videos as per usual but as I've said in previous videos I don't really mind if it rains I just like to be out and about visiting places so here we are here's one of well, this was a gatehouse and it's slightly ruined admittedly I haven't done a huge amount of research for this outing I've just sort of come a bit spur of the moment so to speak so we're now entering the castle and you can see the castle grounds here, so the regimental museum is in the old keep, so that we're not going to do today. That door I just showed you, I said we can't go in, is that one there? So you can give an eye, gives you an idea of where we're being. So this is now coming up to the keep. You can see the gardens around here. So the railway station is literally down there on the other side of that wall, which I'll be able to show you in a moment. So where Laura's tower is, in front of that tower, that tree you can see, the one that's coniferous but got the sort of orangey colour leaf. That's a larch tree. A larch is the only deciduous coniferous tree. That's interesting. There's a what looks to be a giant golden eagle. I'm not sure if that's got some sheep think there was some significance of Shrewsbury. If anyone again wants to comment on that one, confirm. Please do. Look where that went. Another little gatehouse out of the castle. It looks like it's now used as a bit of a wheelbarrow store. We need to find our way up though to 
I'm not entirely sure which bit's which of the castle, because this is obviously the mound. So I assume where we're heading up to now was originally the keep, but it looks like in later times, the regimental museum became the keep. So we've got a really nice winding path now to go up behind the gardens, we go under this yew tree, and up to Laura's Tower. It's interesting because not that many tourists um, come in here, or people in general, because it's a known fact you have to pay to go into the Regimental Museum, which I'm sure is very interesting, although I'm not doing it today, you don't have to pay to do this bit we're doing. So those who know, get the enjoyment. Come up here, look at that, there's the castle. This is the larch tree I was saying about. So it's deciduous, um, not evergreen, like all other coniferous trees are. Right, so where are we? I think, I think it's interesting. There's a gate ahead of us, which is locked. Ah, oh, yeah, there is a... This gate might be locked, but that's not where we're going. We're going for this arch here. And as we go up the final few steps, we will see Laura's Tower. In front of us there, she, she is Laura's Tower. And if we go over to here, you get a brilliant view over Shrewsbury Railway Station. It'd be a perfect place to see a steam train, wouldn't it? So, see that Virgin Voyager still in the station? It's the London North Western Railway. No, West Midland Trains units. I can't remember what they're called now since so they changed their Anyway, the 170s are in the sidings. Shrewsbury Abbey's over there, Seven Tile Junction. Now, here you can see better what I said about the platform straddling the River Seven. And so, if you came up here in summer, I don't think you'd see too much because of all these trees. But if you look down there, you can see how the platforms are on the bridge over the River Seven. And then, if you look, you can clearly see the River Seven heading off in that direction towards um, how it goes through Atcham, Battingham Park is. And it, but it kind of does a whole circuit around the town of Shrewsbury. It's a really pleasant walk. You've got all the way around there, and then you've got River Seven again. Said so not far over there. So uh, we can't get into Laura's Tower, but what we certainly can do is we can go up the steps to the base of Laura's Tower. So here's the tower here. Let's finish this video at the highest point we possibly can and of course the higher we go the better the view gets even on a rainy day like this so yeah that's pretty spectacular so we started over there in the prison you can just see the chimneys through the trees and we finish here at Laura's Tower so which we can't get into either can we see much that way I don't not a huge amount well the town centre is that way there's some lovely churches in Shrewsbury and it is one of the finest Tudor towns in Great Britain so it really is worth you know coming to visit if um, you're ever in the area so from the I'm not going to say the top of Laura's Tower it's not the top but from Laura's Tower at Shrewsbury Castle thank you very much for watching and um, please do feel free to like subscribe and you know tell your friends they might be interested in the videos I make so thank you very much for watching with the view of the 7 goodbye